from another INET team member, uh, just from Stuart here, talking about uh, something that caused a bit of a roar at our last INET, uh, INET staff meeting due to, to the, its original presenters' um, antics and the content therein. Uh, Stuart, on Carrier Ethernet. Afternoon. Okay, so today I'm ringing for Tom Newlands, who was originally meant to present this. Um, Tom decided to avoid it by leaving the country. Uh, <laughs> it was a, uh, a talk he gave on Metro Ethernet, which realistically you will, most of you will have heard of, um, but it's actually called Carrier Ethernet. It's the definition. And Carrier Ethernet is a set of standards and specifications controlled by the Metro Ethernet Forum, um, delivers high quality, uh, controlled capacity Ethernet services on a national, um, global and uh, metro scale. Uh, and it's something we're looking at to replace some of the stuff we have, uh, which is in the SDH and DWDM environment. And it's kind of really about the small capacity links. So this is 10 gig and below. Uh, in the campus environment, it's kind of about the connectivity. Everyone here has been talking about, you know, 100 gig here, 100 gig there, which, you know, we do. But this is really about connecting those smaller campuses. How do you control those? How do you get to them? How do you manage capacity to them? Um, so in SDH, what we have is basically 150 meg and 1 gig. In DWDM or, you know, even, even sort of metro space, WDM, it's 1 gig or 10 gig. Not a lot of choice, fixed capacity point to point, and some of the Tom decided in his presentation he's going to compare to something he likes, and that's the Woolworths chocolate mud cake. So basically what you have is, you know, in your SDH environment, you've literally got, you know, your small chocolate cake, your Woolies chocolate cake, and in your 10 gig environment, you've got your, your, your big chocolate cake, and you go to Woolies and you get those, they taste the same day to day to day. You know, it's a very consistent product. It's pretty good. It runs really well. And this cake, you know, you, you buy one type or you buy the other type, that's it. It's, there's no variety. There's no real comparison of options. There's no real flexibility in it. And basically, you know, you're in a, it's, it's consistent. No, the other thing it is, you can't break it up. It's either the small one or it's the big one. So you're in a situation where I've either got to buy the big one and I've bought way too much for the environment I need, or I'm buying the small one and it's okay for now, but tomorrow it's, it's getting a little bit too small. And so really you want to, you can't buy slices at Woolies. You know, you can ask. I'm not going to say, you're not going to be very happy about it. And so there's not much you can do except you can buy a lot more smaller ones. They start to overlap each other and they start to cost you a lot more than what it really should. So basically what we're looking at, you know, and there's a lot of waste if you're buying that big cake because... I know a lot of you out there have some 10 gig links and literally you're getting it there and you're taking a couple of slices of it, but the rest is really going in the bin. So what we're looking at is the change to this, and that's moving into the carrier ethernet environment. Now we've got some choice, you know. Basically you're looking at different varieties, you've got different quality, you've got sprinkles on top, you get some strawberries with it. You can also get slices, as you can see, someone's taking a slice out of the line up there. So we're in an environment where you know, and this is something that we looked at and said, there's different ways of doing, there's got to be a different way of doing this. And this is something that people have been asked about and it's something that we're moving into. And basically what you're looking at is you can, you can take a small cake and you can get smaller slices of that. You can also take a, you know, you can basically buy a bigger plate day one and, you know, we can deliver you slices on that or we can give you a, you know, slice of Bavarian, slice of cheesecake, a couple of profiteroles different things you want to do, different services, voice, that can be actually video, that can just be general data, general use of data. The other thing we can do is we can also give you a bit of an option on this stuff. Not only can we send you a chocolate cake, we can give you a bit of a cheesecake as a backup. So you're sitting there and you eat your chocolate cake and Farmer Joe comes along and he knocks that cake off your plate or, you know, manages to put it back through the intercapital fibre. With the SDH or, you know, optical environment, it was a case of if that fibre was cut, that service was down unless you bought a second one which you weren't even using. In the Metro or well, Carrier Ethernet environment, what we can look to do is start to do overlap or failover routes on that, With either, even where we're delivering a single service to a site, when that hits the actual connection node point 
or the local um, CEV realistically, we can actually, as we build this network out, start to be able to offer the services, diversity on those services. So basically, you know, in the past, if you lost your cake, you get hungry, you get upset, and now we're giving you a change. Getting a little bit technical. I'm going to keep it fairly high. Basically what we're looking at is the carrier Ethernet is a set of surfaces made up of uh, measurable and controllable attributes specified and certified by the Metro Ethernet Forum. What we have here is standardised services, which, you know, realistically that comes down to a case of having, I guess, indus industry certified cake recipes. You want a profiterole? You want to get a profiterole. I mean, you're looking out there, if you picked up one of those little mini profiteroles and it tasted like, you know, something completely different, you'd be a bit upset about that. And this way what we're giving you is a carrier Ethernet. You know, they define a service as E-Line. If we say this service that you're getting is E-Line, then you can look up that carrier Ethernet standard. That's the service you're actually going to get. Scalability, that's about changing that single, you know, those few couple of, couple of options. So we're looking at stuff like a 200 meg, 500 meg, 1 gig, 2 gig and 3 to 5 gigs. So basically just giving you a bit more flexibility in that environment. And in fact, with carrier E, it's realistically, we could provide anything from one gig, sorry, 100 meg through to 10 gig in this space. That gets hard to manage though. You can imagine if everybody wants, you know, I want 11 gig, I want 7.5 gig, that's just not gonna happen. So we will actually restrict that to a set of services, but a much wider range than what we're looking at that we have today. Reliability, that comes down to realistically having performance monitoring per service. Um, and making sure that the service is up to scratch. So currently we rely on external functions to actually manage that. In a lot of cases, it's, it's you know, our customers calling up and knocking going, there's something wrong. With Metro mm -hmm. Ethernet, sorry, with Carrier Ethernet, you actually, we can put a layer of uh, testing across the top of the services. It's, it's fairly passive, it's small scale, you don't really know it's there, but it's actually in each individual service. So we can actually see when things are starting to go wrong. We can see an error, and we can have a level of what sort of, you know, level of degradation we want, and we, then we can enact a protection policy based on that. Service management ties in with that, and that's actually the case, that's actually the um, services that are the tests that run. So the reliability is the failover options that come with error. The, the um, service management is enacting those uh, tests on top of the service and defining the sort of error level that you want to have uh, trigger protection action. Quality of service, that's uh, prioritisation in the world of cake. So basically, if you want the cheesecake first, we'll make sure you get the cheesecake first. If you want to make sure you always have enough chocolate cake, we'll make sure you have enough chocolate cake. But inside of it, what you've actually got is a series of uh, a layer of where you can have multiple services on your own service, so on, our, on your own capacity, and we can actually guarantee levels in that. But we can also do that on our own network, so we can start to actually use our own network a little bit more, um, what'd you say, a little bit more better. <laughs> Words gone out of my head. It's, it's a case of where we have capacity, we can give you the ability to say we could define your minimum capacity of a 200 meg service to a campus, but have you able to actually burst through to the full one gig which the link out to your campus has. So suddenly you're in a situation where you're buying the minimum you need and then you can burst through to the capacity that's there. Or you can buy, if you've got a 10 gig link, but you don't want to, you know, don't want to pay the price for that full 10 gig burst. We can give you a gig service with the ability to burst through to two gig. It's kind of going back to the ATM days, but supposedly in a better way. So where are we at? Um, so Arnett went to tender a little bit over a year ago. Um, we went out for the reasons, you know, some of those reasons I've described. Um, one of the core ones being there's a bit more service offering in that environment based on what people are asking for. Um, and, you know, basically we wanted to offer a bit more than the chocolate cake. But we have two other reasons, and one of the, the SDH network is actually getting old. The hardware's kind of out of support now, so we're, while we're, you know, still using that resource and we'll sweat it for a while yet, we actually need to replace it. It's also a new generation of hardware, so as with everything, it's getting smaller. Um, we're talking about going from hardware that's sitting in CVs that, you know, comes up about three foot high down to single RU devices. It's a lot better. 
Uh, and it means we can actually, because we've got low power options, a lot of these CVs aren't high power environments. So we've actually got to manage what we do in those environments. So some of those CVs, we're actually going to be able to put more hardware in, in the interim places in our network and through that actually off, offer better options for diversity for some of those campuses. Uh, and I guess the other one is in the uh, metro space. It comes down to we need to, while we're using the DWM top technologies that uh, Phil spoke about before, we actually have quite a few areas where we've got relatively thin fibre cells and we need to do better management on that layer. So we're looking to do a lot more aggregation and also splitting of services, getting out to environments like a data centre where you need to have a relatively small capacity connection to you know, any sort of data centre for a third party provider for some particular sort of service. With the uh, current technologies, we need to take that back to our core nodes and then, then drop that back out towards the data centres. With the carrier ethernet environment, we're looking to put more uh, aggregation points, I guess, in the network and actually give a flexibility of the way we can deliver those services for you. And we think it's a good fit for the, um, in, in sort of this discussion, which is a lot about the campus networks, it's a good fit for the inter-campus networks for the smaller campuses in that metro, super metro and regional space. Probably easiest to demonstrate with a couple of slides. Okay, so the first one just shows our existing sort of uh, SDH network. As you can see, it's a fairly standard product, point to point. Um, good, solid piece of chocolate cake. With Metro E, there's not actually a lot of change in the service that we're offering. It's more a case of we're able to do a little bit, um, a bit more, a lot more flexibility. So we're looking at a one gig or 10 gig last mile. You notice that in the uh, SDH node, generically what we have is we're handing off from our active equipment out to the customer sites. Quite often that is at CWDM or dark fibre. So there's no management over that last mile. Now we're actually looking to put hardware on in that last mile environment and then provide the service. So we're managing the service onto your actual campus site, into your equipment room. We can see what's going on. We don't actually need you to tell us. We can see it. Um, and it is, it's also wider range of capacities. They're just some generic ones we're looking at. Um, burst options, those I said before, double rate and service protection, basically from the node effectively. If there's a failure in the short point distance, shorter path, then it can fail over to that longer route. This is kind of the other end of the scale um, and is more about a network where we're looking at a um, multi-campus sort of environment which might have in the past had you know gig links or 10 gig links to one campus or one gig to the next one, not necessarily any protection. We've actually looked at this for a couple of uh, universities that are looking at an option for a effectively private managed carrier ethernet network. So whilst we will manage it, we have visibility of it, it's, it's effectively your own. What it gives us is an ability to put um, services over the top of that. And we're talking sort of, you know, 10 gig links in between these campuses. We can run dual hardware devices on a site. We can run single. But what we can actually do at this layer is, you know, provide remote campus one and remote campus two with dedicated high capacity, say five gig, you know, on each path with a protection failover. We can run smaller campuses like two or, you know, this, this remote one four over the top of that as well. And each one can have a level of capacity that's defined for that campus, but then full shared capability between them. We can also run multiple services to a campus. So while we can actually drop in remote, you know, the link between remote campus and the hub is, is five gig or two gig or whatever, we can also turn around and say, well, that's great, and you, now you've got to go through the process of doing your own quads to make sure your voice or your other services are well managed. We're actually in a position where we can now say, okay, on port three or port four, we can give you voice at 10 megabits per second, for example, from that campus to both other sites. It starts to uh, give us that ability to offer a wider range of service without, you know, the, the universities having to do a lot of work in those smaller campus environments or put out, you know, hardware that you, it's harder to justify. So the outcome of the, um, the tender is that we've selected uh, Telco Systems as our initial preferred supplier for carrier ethernet hardware. Um, that was quite a few, um, there's, there's a number of reasons behind it. A lot of carriers do it, so you, you Cisco does this stuff, Juniper does some sort of the environment, does the equipment as well, um, Huawei's in there, there's others as well. A couple of the main reasons we chose this stuff was um, physical size, so 
while Juniper do this hardware, a lot of it's big and we need smaller stuff in a lot of our small environments. It's also, we've got to think that, you know, we're not just servicing you guys, there's a whole layer of education sector underneath you that's smaller and managed as well. Um, you can see the port counts on those, the 3308, that's a kind of a one gig size unit. The 3348 is, our, is 10 gig and it's good for those environments where we're currently dropping in a, a 40 port, uh, you know, a 40 port large, noisy switch as sort of was discussed before. These are nice, small, fairly passive, um, 4 by 10 gig. They're good for use as sort of an NTU, but they're also the sort of equipment we'd use for those, you know, the 10 gig link network that I showed just before. Um, we're also looking at the 8100 8, unit. That's um, quite a bit bigger. It's a 3RU unit, a couple of hundred gig, 40 gigs on it. It's kind of where we see this more as an endpoint node though, aggregation unit. It not, it's not really a network unit, primarily because of the low 100 gig port count. I think most of you have already started to see that the uh, you know, 16 port, 32 port, 40 port, 100 gig switch is already out there. And that kind of rolls into more of an SDN environment. This is more about aggregating up into that, in, that environment. Um, so right now, we've got these platforms in the lab. Um, we're running up some test networks. Uh, we've actually got a couple of live networks out there. First is Teething. Then they're, they're on an environment where they're not the primary network service. Um, they're basically a failover, so we can, if things go wrong, we're not going to get screamed at. We'll just get yelled at. Uh, and we're also, uh, they're in the lab. We're also, you know, you go through any RFQ, you always go through teething problems, you're always going to find out where those, you need to find out where those problems are. We're going through that process in the moment, um, trying to sort those out, working with the vendor to isolate and identify. It also doesn't help that in the carrier Ethernet environment, its core use case is uh, mobile backhaul. So quite, it's very kind of um, single service type layer. So a lot of the stuff we're finding with the vendor is, oh, okay, no one's actually ever tried to do that before. While it's in the specification, it's meant to work, it's the finding these things are going wrong. Um, and so I guess getting back to Tom's term terminology, we've got newly trained chefs, kitchen we haven't used before, and a few recipes and ingredients that aren't quite working out exactly as expected. Uh, working through it, sorting out issues, and hopefully we can get some nice cake on night, some variation of cakes on the table soon. Thank you. Thank you.